Hi little peoples, welcome to 5th standard science online class. In this class we will continue with the lesson skeletal system and nervous system. So in the previous class we discussed about the different types of joints. So we will continue with that. So in addition to bones, cartilage and muscles also help in movement. So we will see what is cartilage. So cartilage holds the bones together at the joints. It also protects the bones. Without cartilage, the bones would rub against each other and wear out. Some organs such as the nose and ears have cartilage too. Next is muscles. So muscles are tissues that cover the bones and they are attached to the bones with the help of a special tissues called tendons. Both these muscles and bones they work together to make the movement which is possible. And they are also important for the process such as digestion. In a human body there are three types of muscles skeletal muscles cardiac muscles and smooth muscles so first is skeletal muscles skeletal muscles help in movement that is these muscles are attached to the skeleton system so muscles in the arms and legs are examples of skeletal muscles so these are the only type of muscles which we can control directly that is if you want to move our arm or legs or hold something we can control it next is cardiac muscles muscles in the heart are examples of cardiac muscles so the muscles in the heart they beat till the end isn't it so we do not have any control over this type of muscles. They work automatically. We cannot control it. If we control it, we will die. Okay. Next is smooth muscles. Muscles in the digestive system are examples of smooth muscles. So here also we do not have any control over this type of muscles. And so these three are the muscles, skeletal muscles, cardiac muscles and smooth muscles. Now I think you will be seeing the page number 88. Take your pencils. Let's fill in the let's remember. Identify the type of joint in each of the following. Name one place where each of them is found in the human body. So the first type of joint is hinge and it is in the knee second one is a ball and socket joint and place is hip third one is a gliding joint and the place is ankle fourth one is a pivot joint the place is neck so the next system that we are going to see is a nervous system so the nervous system controls the different organs in our body. So all the functions in our body are controlled by the nervous system which is very very important. Any movement is controlled by the nervous system. So the brain, the spinal cord and the nerves form the different parts of our nervous system. See the picture? Okay. So first we will see brain. So the brain is a very important organ in our body. It controls the movement and helps us to store information in our body. And the human brain has three parts. Cerebrum, cerebellum and medulla. Cerebrum, cerebellum and medulla. So what is cerebrum? You just see the picture. In the picture. The largest part of the human brain is called the cerebrum and it is responsible for learning, 
memory intelligence and all sorts of logics that we are thinking so it also controls the functioning of the sense organs so what are the five types of sense organs eyes ears nose tongue and skin so the cerebrum controls the functions of these sense organs okay so the next one is cerebellum the cerebellum is situated below the cerebrum and it is responsible for muscle coordination and maintaining the balance of our body okay so next is the medulla it is also called the brain stem it controls activities such as heartbeat breathing swallowing and sneezing so all the parts in the brain function is to control okay control of our body all types of movements are all controlled by this parts of our brain that is cerebrum cerebellum and medulla next is the spinal cord the spinal cord is a thick cord of nerve tissue that extends down from the brain stem it's like a root isn't it it is surrounded and protected by the backbone so the spinal cord is responsible for the transformation of sorry transfer of information between the brain and the rest of the body so the spinal cord is responsible for the transfer of information between the brain and the body it even controls the actions that do not involve the brain such actions are called reflex action any action that is you want to pick a fruit or eat something um, information has to be sent to the brain then only our uh, body will do that action okay so it all involves the brain and the spinal cord some actions do not need the messages from the brain so the spinal cord is directly involved in it that actions are called reflex action so we'll see about the reflex action later next one is nerves what are nerves a network of nerves run throughout our body we can see directly the nerves in our body also the green color are all nerves that are running inside our body it all carries messages to and from the brain spinal cord and other parts of the body all the informations are carried from the brain to the brain through these network of nerves okay so there are mainly three types of nerves what are they sensory nerves motor nerves and mixed nerves what are sensory nerves sensory nerves carry messages from different parts of the body to the brain or spinal cord okay the sensory nerves carry messages from different parts of the body to the brain or spinal cord so next one is motor nerves so these motor nerves carry messages from the brain or spinal cord to the different parts of the body next is mixed nerves mixed nerves carry messages both ways that is from the brain or spinal cord to the different parts of the body and from the different parts of the body to the brain or spinal cord okay so the work of the nerves is to carry the information from brain to body or from body to bone brain okay so next is reflex action reflex action reflex actions what is the instant reaction if you touch a hot object say fire accidentally what will you draw you will withdraw your hand immediately isn't it thus touching the fire act as a stimulus and withdrawing your hand immediately was a response so this automatic response of the body to a particular stimulus is called a reflex action the automatic response of the body to a particular stimulus is called a reflex action okay most reflex actions take place because of 
messages sent by the spinal cord the brain is not involved so reflex action is mainly takes place due to the messages sent by the spinal cord okay here the brain is not involved these actions are very fast okay so you see the figure you can understand suppose you are going to step on a pointed uh, object suddenly you will take your leg from that place okay that sudden response is called as reflex actions reflex actions okay that's all for today's class okay. we'll see the next in the next session bye